Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to call the meeting to order. As a reminder, please note the board meetings are being recorded for the convenience of those unable to attend this meeting. Uh, recording and closed captioning will be posted to the BRS YouTube channel following the meeting. Alex, can you please call roll? Uh, Isaac Carmignani. Present. Thank you. Janelle Chacon. April Chapman. Deborah Dillingham. Here. Thank you. Natalie Green Giles. Here. Thank you. Eric Henry. Here. Thank you. Michael Kraft. Present. Thank you. Vanessa Leong. Here. Thank you. Gary Lennon. John Matterick. Present. Thank you. Donald Nesbitt. Lindsay Oates. Aye. Present. Thank you. Kathy Park Price. Present. Thank you. Laurie Podvesker. Thomas Shepard. And Jacqueline Tagarante. Present. And Janiel just joined. Alex. Welcome, Janiel. Thank you, Janiel. Uh, Alex, do we have a quorum? Yes, thank you. We have okay. a quorum. We have a quorum. First order of business is calendar item one, noting the minutes of the meeting of the Board of Retirement held on November 23rd, 2021. The minutes have been previously provided to the board via email and posted to the SharePoint site. May I have a motion to consider the minutes from the November 23rd board meeting? Michael. Michael. And a second? Janiel. Janiel, thank you. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes for the November 23rd, 2021 board meeting, please indicate your approval. I approve. Uh, I approve. I approve. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I, I abstain. John, I, yeah, I, Isaac, I abstain because I missed that meeting. Okay, Isaac is abstaining. I think I heard another. Vanessa, I'm abstaining. Thank you, Thank you Vanessa. Thank you, uh, Lindsay also. And Lindsay, we have all that, Alex. I have three abstentions, Isaac, okay. Vanessa and Lindsay. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Motion carries. Next on the agenda is the executive director's update. Sandy, would you like to share any remarks with us? Yes, I'll try to keep this short. Um, it's uh, this could be the last meeting for many of our trustees and. Uh, I guess it's a beautiful sunset over lower Manhattan for the event. Uh, give you a quick update on hires. Uh, the last meeting I indicated that we had 22 prospective open headcount that had are to be filled. That number is down to 16. We've added members in uh, uh, new hires in member communications, accounting, and operations. We have four pending hires that will start in the next week or two. And we are currently interviewing and recruiting for the deputy director investment strategy, deputy director of IT for, for cybersecurity, member communications, and there is an ARB hiring pool scheduled for the 18th of January and 20th of January. And we expect to make significant progress in our hiring plans in the next three to four weeks. We continue to have separations. Um, so uh, while it's it looks like we added eight, we actually only only added about net six. One of the interesting things is that about 50% of the offers we are making are being turned down. Kind of surprising high percentage. Um, so I guess what I'd like to do now is just to take a few minutes to thank uh, the Board of Trustees for the last few years. Uh, like I said, uh, January 1st may see significant changes in our Board of Trustees. And we are girding for that. We are preparing uh, new training materials uh, to ramp in new trustees. There, there are a number of trustees who will continue, which is a good thing. And um, uh, but I, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, for everyone some of the things that uh, the board has supported uh, our organization with over the last few years. Um, we uh, expanded our counseling staff. We replaced a 40 year old failing operation system. We continue to improve that system, moving it to the cloud, adding member self service, activating mobile app capability, 
and activating a campaigns feature to reach the unenrolled. Uh, we created a new call center member communications unit, which remains understaffed, but is growing and improving our member interactions. Uh, you supported the impl you supported the implementation of software and hardware infrastructure that allowed BERS to convert to remote work overnight on March 20th, two years ago. Um, uh, we implemented remote desktop VOIP phone system, improved backup systems and network hardware. We've replaced fiscal operations software, uh, moving NetSuite to the cloud, stood up an internal audit function, an extraordinarily important uh, function which had not existed, um, making significant improvements in our operations and risk management. That, uh, that function is uh, one individual with an outside external consulting firm, and we hope to change that over time, but a sig very significant move. Um, this board approved the budget to relocate our offices out of our free 65 court space. Uh, we maintain a, 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 a counseling staff there, but uh, that is now being repopulated with DOE folks as we speak. Uh, and you approved the creation of an investment strategy department with resources to build, if not a best in class, a best in city investment office infrastructure and staff. You helped stand up our learning and development program, which will support and improve careers of our staff. You supported the restructuring of our board governance and generally set a strong foundation for BRS for continued growth and improvement. For this and uh, the other support you have offered BRS staff and through them BRS members and retirees, I thank you very much. And that's it from me, John. Anybody have any questions for Sandy? Sandy, may I say something? Please, Lindsay. Um, so I just want to join Sandy in saying thank you to the um, members of the board. I echo um, Sandy in all of the accomplishments that the Burris team has taken on. Um, so well done. <laughs> everyone the work continues obviously there's always more to do but a lot has been accomplished in your tenure and you should be very proud of that um i wanted to share that this will also likely be my last um burrs board meeting as i plan to leave the department of education in january as well so wanted to share that um with all of you and also just say how grateful i am for the work that we all have done together in our multiple capacities. <laughs> um, and specifically to Sandy, Daniel, Antonio, and Alex, I've learned a lot from you um, in this work, and I thank you for that. Um, this is a very different work stream from the one that I'm used to doing, and so it's been great to have um, uh, you know, new things to learn. And so thank you all for your partnership, and uh, happy holidays, everyone. Yeah. Lindsay, Happy thank you very this. much for the support. Yeah, Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, thank everybody. You both. Pleasure Hi. working with you. I just want to echo everybody and say um, uh, I really appreciate Sandy and your team for what you have done. You, the ongoing challenge of governance of, of this particular board, given the unique structure, um, people Obviously, we all know that if you are on the panel for education policy, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are fluent in pension fund um, vernacular. You have done an exceptional job, though, I think, uh, in the three and a half years that I've been on, and for those of you who have been on longer, always um, reaching out, making sure your team reaches out, going the extra mile to meet with us offline, and then, of course, all the professional development opportunities, the conferences, the, the just endless, endless opportunities. So I really uh, want to highlight that because obviously going forward, it's it's so critical. And I hope that the next board um, takes advantage to the extent that they can because it is really important. Thank you, Natalie. Anybody else? And I'd like to thank, yes, I'd like to thank Lindsay also for being for always being professional. All right, next up.
the next item on this afternoon's agenda are calendar items two through 17, the ordinary business of birds. May I have a motion to consider calendar items two through 17? Michael and a second. Jacqueline. Jacqueline, thank you. Uh, Alex, can you please tell us about the ordinary business of birds? Of course. These are all the retirements, death benefits, and refunds that have been processed since the last meeting of this board. Thank you, Alex. Uh, we will now vote on these items. All in favor of approving calendar items 2 through 17, please indicate your approval. Aye. 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 Approved, Michael. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item in the agenda is the fiscal year 2021 post audit presentation by Grant Thornton. May I have a motion to consider? Definitely. And a yes. second. Jacqueline. Yes. Jacqueline, thank you so much. Uh, we have Sharon Campbell here from Grant Thornton to present. Ms. Campbell, floor is yours. Thank you, John. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me present my screen. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Uh, yes, now. Yes. Yep. Perfect. All right, so I'm Sharon Campbell. I'm a managing director in Grant Thornton's employee benefit plan audit practice, and I served as the lead on the uh, 2021 audit of the BURS uh, plan. I appreciate the opportunity to present to you today the results of the 2021 audit, as well as our required communications to those charged with governance. I believe each of you have been provided with our presentation, so I'm going to highlight some of the key slides for you. Uh, before I begin, I would like to express our appreciation to the BRS management team for their efforts in assisting us in, uh, uh, in a successful and timely completion of this year's audit. Overall, the audit went well, and we issued a clean, unmodified opinion dated October 28th. Okay, so we approach our audits using a risk based approach and we start by identifying significant risks in all audits management override of internal controls over financial reporting is always considered a significant risk as a presumed fraud risk. To address this risk, we obtain an understanding of the financial reporting process and controls over journal entries and other adjustments and the suitability of design and implementation of such controls. Uh, we make in inquiries of individuals involved in the financial reporting process about any inappropriate and unusual activity they may be aware of related to the processing of such journal entries and other adjustments. We consider fraud risk indicators, uh, the nature and complexity of accounts and entries processed outside of the normal course of operations. And using whole ledger analytics on all journal entries, including uh, manual and automated, we pinpoint transactions that appear to have a higher risk of potential management override based on a cumulative risk score. We subject entries with high cumulative risk scores to further analysis, and we isolate a subset of those entries for testing. And for those entries tested, we obtained an underlying support and evaluated the validity of the, of the adjustments in the normal course of business and obtained evidence of approval. We did not identify any exceptions uh, in, this, in this testing. Okay. Other areas of focus um, that are not considered high uh, significant risks, but are an area of focus include investments uh, for investment fair value. We confirm investment positions, all investment positions, and then we evaluate the reasonableness of the fair value disclosures on a sample basis. And with the assistance of our New York uh, pricing group, we test the fair value of investments held at year end, as well as purchases and sales uh, throughout the year to determine the reasonableness of the reported values. Um, we also evaluate the reasonableness of investment expenses. There was one proposed adjustment that was identified as part of an annual reconciliation process um, due to a lag between reporting date and the plan's fiscal year. Another area of focus is contributions. We test the completeness of the population, and then on a sample basis, we test the eligibility to participate and contribute, as well as the accuracy of the contribution calculation and that amounts were withheld in accordance with plan provisions. Other areas of focus include benefit payments. So again, we test the completeness of the population, 
And then on a sample basis, we test the eligibility to receive the benefit as well as the accuracy of the benefit payment calculation in accordance with plan provisions. Um, we also look at the total pension liability uh, by testing the completeness of the census data used for the underlying, um, the underlying data for the pension liability. With the assistance of our firm actuaries, we assess the reasonableness of the actuarial assumptions and methods used on, and on a sample basis, we test the accuracy of the demographic data driving the valuation. Other areas of focus uh, include member loans, ITGCs, and the adequacy of, of overall disclosures. We talked about whole ledger analytics. Uh, I've, I include this slide um, just as a reminder that cybersecurity continues to be a primary focus. Uh, responsible plan fiduciaries have an obligation to ensure proper mitigation of cybersecurity risks. On a periodic evaluation or periodic evaluations of the design and effectiveness of ITGCs can help mitigate those risks. For ITGCs, we did not test the operating effectiveness of the ITGCs, but rather with the assistance of our firm IT specialists, we perform procedures to gain an understanding of the ITGCs in certain areas, including security administration, program maintenance, program execution, techno technology operations, and cybersecurity. So as mentioned earlier, we issued an unmodified clean opinion uh, I want to point out that the system adopted GASB 98 in the current year, which basically uh, changes the previous term of comprehensive annual financial reporting to annual comprehensive financial report using the acronym ACFR or ACFR for short. Uh, there were no scope limitations. Um, we had open and effective communication with management. Um, and any internal control and best practice recommendations have been discussed with management. None, no control deficiencies were identified that uh, rose to a level of significant deficiency or material weakness. We are expecting to issue our opinion on the ACFR, the ACFR, uh, hopefully by tomorrow. And the ACFR will include the GFO a certificate of achievement for the 2020 uh, ACFR. Other required communications, we're not aware of any going concern matters. Um, during our audit procedures, we did not identify any fraud or non-compliance with laws or regulations. Uh, there were no significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in internal control over financial reporting. We're not aware of management's use of other auditors as it relates to the plan. Uh, we're not, uh, we did not use internal audits specifically for any of our procedures. Related parties and related party transactions are appropriately disclosed in the notes to the financial statements. Uh, we did not identify any significant unusual transactions. And I'm pleased to report that we had no disagreements um, with management, not aware of any consultations with other accountants that management had in relation to our audit. There were no significant issues that were discussed with management um, or any significant difficulties dis uh, that were encountered during our audit. Uh, there were no modifications to the audit report. And again, the financial statements will be included in the ACFR. We are also required to communicate the quality of the accounting practices. So the uh, system's significant accounting policies are uh, detailed in the notes to the basic financial statements and are considered to be appropriate in all material respects and consistent with the prior year. Um, significant estimates, the most significant estimates include fair value of investments and the pension liability, as well as related disclosures. We've assessed the financial statements and disclosures uh, for clarity and completeness, and the footnote disclosures to the financial statements appear to be informative, consistent, and clear. That concludes my presentation. Uh, I'll stop sharing my screen and see if anyone has any questions. Thank you, Sharon. Um, just a quick question. Um, um, can caller user number four identify themselves? Uh, I'm guessing is that Jacqueline? I, he I heard her voice earlier. I was Sandy? just about to say, I can't see if it says um, I number four, but I'm with the 210 area code. Oh, okay, great. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody, so does anybody have any questions, uh, Ms. Campbell? 
Okay. Well, before I log off, I do want to say, you know, wish everyone a happy and healthy holiday season. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. All right. Thank you. Next, uh, the next item on the agenda is an employment matter, which belongs in executive session. Uh, may I have a motion to enter executive session? So moved, Isaac. Isaac, and a second from Michael. Uh, okay, we will now vote. All in favor of entering executive session, please indicate your approval. Aye. Aye. Isaac, aye. Aye, Vanessa. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, we are now in executive session. Karen, please remove all the attendees other than the law department, Burr's executive management, and Michael Salmon. Okay, sure. And Sherry. Okay, and Sherry. Give me a second. Okay. On correct. Okay, cameras back on, and I'll admit everybody back in. Okay. Okay, everybody's back in, John. You may proceed. We're ready. Um, yeah, everybody's back. In. Okay, great. We are now in public session. Alex, can you please report out uh, the board's actions in executive session? Certainly. During executive session, the board voted to approve calendar item 18, acknowledgement of Michael Samet as acting chief actuary. Thank you, Alex. The next item on the agenda is calendar item 19, authorization to the control to proceed with the private equity annual implementation plan. May I have a motion to consider? I, who was that? I make motion, Deb. Deb is, is a first and a second. Isaac, second. I didn't hear a second. Is it was it me? I have a second, John. Yeah. Thank you, Isaac. Uh, Antonio, can you please tell us about this? Okay. Certainly, and um, I'm going to share my screen. We're actually going to go through all of the annual plans first, and then um, go through each of the calendar items to ask for a specific vote. But one, since they all are part of the same package, we want to present them, and we'll have um, Axia, Tory Co. Partners, and um, Siegel Marco. Um, make comments as we go through them. So these are the, the, the 2022 private market annual plans. Um, these are, again, guidance for the uh, investment strategy team, consultants, and the Bureau of Asset Management on how to proceed in um, meeting our um, asset allocation targets and searches uh, through the calendar year. Um, as you can see here, as we did last year, we put together a checklist that walks through um, the major components of those annual plans, and then we'll have the um, the uh, consultants go through in more detail. Um, the biggest thing for us is we want to maintain our 7% assumed rate of return for pacing in the private markets, which is um, our, as you know, our assumed rate of return. We're the only system that uses seven, the other ones use 5%, but that means a, a bit more aggressive pacing. For private equity, our target is $335 million, plus or minus 84 million, of which 302 would be in the primary program um, and 33 in the emerging manager program. Um, real estate, 80 million in core, 120 in non-core. Um, 215 in private credit, 175 in infrastructure. The last two are high conviction lists that will continue to work with your consultants on developing those high conviction lists um, for managers and opportunities that we believe fit best in the Burst portfolio but may be inappropriate for the other systems. And to that end, um, we foresee a perhaps five to eight uh, independent recommendations. So um, I'll stop sharing for now. I invite Matt Coyne from Accusatory Co. To, to give comments on the development of the um, um, implementation plan. Sure. Thanks, Antonio. So, um, do you want me to go through each of the, of the plans? I was going to touch on that kind of the pacing for, for private equity, private credit, real assets, and real estate. Yes, all four. So good. So good. So, uh, the, the pacing is an important aspect of the planning process, and because of the nature of private equity, where capital is drawn over time, um, we need to come up with a, a model. So, we, we basically need to project how cap after you make a commitment, how that capital is going to be called and how it's going to be distributed and how the market value is going to change over time. So 
So we've developed a model uh, using 30 years of historical data to help us uh, project how, the, how these funds will act. So, and we apply it to each and every fund in your portfolio. So basically we look at the fund, where is it today? And we're projecting where is it going in the future and when are they gonna be making those distributions over time? Uh, starting with private equity, let me just share this so you can see the, uh, starting with private equity, Antonio mentioned the uh, 335 million, uh, basically he split uh, 300 million for core funds and 35 million for the emerging management program. Um, that, that compares to a 275 million uh, in pacing for last year. Uh, the, the pipeline's full, I'm confident we can, we can get there. Um, we did come up slightly short this year because of the, the fact that we had to, um, we, we said no to some things that were on the ban menu. And um, we did that I think three times. I mean, one was blow your uh, minimum commitment size and two others uh, we didn't have high conviction in, uh, so we passed on. Um, really no change in the approach though. Uh, you know, we're trying to target high conviction managers and, and pass or move on from existing GPs that aren't performing. Um, so hopefully you can see my screen there. Uh, the target of 9%, again, the pacing is, is if you commit 335 million each year, the, the goal is to get to that 9% and level out. So this is what the, the private equity looks like at 335 million. We run a lot of different scenarios. Um, you know, Antonio mentioned the 7%. That's, that's, a, uh, that's an important factor in, in, the, uh, in the modeling uh, because the, how you grow the denominator, the total pension size, has a significant impact on, on the model. So we've gone to 7%, but as you can see at 5%, even 3%, uh, it basically means you do one less deal per year. But we feel good about the 7%. The, uh, the last thing I'll mention on the private equity, uh, we did also do stress testing, spaghetti chart, it basically answers the question, uh, your, your target is 9% and you have bands of plus or minus 4%, what would it take for you to uh, breach that, that threshold of, of 13%? So we're basically saying if the total pension plan declines by 30%, we think you could be over that 13% uh, uh, threshold. So that's you know, obviously the worst case scenario um, if something like that were to happen, we do have the ability to make adjustments uh, in annual pacing each year. So that is private equity. Uh, moving to infrastructure, um, you have a 4% target in infrastructure. Uh, historic, you know, since inception, BRRRS has committed 350 million to 24 different infrastructure funds that have performed extremely well. It's 12.7% net IRR um, since that since that is very good in infrastructure and, and has significantly outperformed the benchmarks. Um, as it stands today, the current market value is 170 million, so about 2%. So to get to that 4% uh, in 2021, uh, the, the target was 125 million, but we had some flexibility to go slightly over and we did. So we, we committed to four funds, uh, 140 million. And then for 2022 and beyond, uh, we set the pacing at 180 million, plus or minus uh, 40 million. So basically, we'll target three to five deals uh, in 2022 in the 40 to 60 million dollar per fund range. The last thing I'll mention about the infrastructure: um, the board recently approved uh, a the co-investment program. So um, hopefully, this year we'll start seeing uh, co-investments. Uh, as part of that allocation. Actually, as of yesterday, we uh, received the first um, deal uh, in, in the pipeline. So we'll, we'll diligence that. Uh, BAM will we'll run their diligence process and, and uh, we'll work with Antonio and his team uh, to, to, to approve that um, uh, along with BAM. So that is infrastructure. Move on to real estate. Um, so real estate has an 8% it's basically split into two buckets, the 4% into core and core plus, kind of the lower risk profile real estate deals, and then 4% uh, into opportunistic and value add. Uh, current market value of the combined real estate portfolio is 434 million, uh, which is a little over 5% uh, 
of the program. Um, since inception, uh, BURS has committed 700 million to 49 funds and a, a generated a net IRR around 10%. Um, in terms of the pacing, what you see here is the core real estate uh, pacing, 4% uh, target again. So uh, if we, we're saying if we commit 80 million, uh, that'll get us to the target. And then if I shift to the uh, opportunistic and value add bucket, uh, which, which is slightly lower uh, or slightly um, lower than the target, uh, we're saying 120 million. So it combines uh, 200 million to the real estate plan. Uh, some of the, the themes um, are consistent with the other asset classes. We're trying to do larger commitments to fewer GPs. And, and hopefully we can continue that in, in 22. Um, in terms of uh, sectors, uh, in industrial and logistics are areas that um, that we think are very interesting to, to target in 2022. Um, we also have the co-investment program with LaSalle. So, so again, we'll be doing additional co-investments uh, in the real estate portfolio. And then on a geographic basis, um, you're slightly below the uh, international target in, in, in Europe. So I think we're hoping to find a couple of good opportunities in, in Europe. Oh, overall, we're really just trying to align BRRRS with experienced managers uh, and ones that have successfully negotiated multiple cycles. I, I think we all would agree that where we are in, in a cycle, uh, valuations are very high. So our, our, our goal is to identify managers, managers and partner with managers that have, have done well through multiple cycles you know, and they can demonstrate their experience through multiple cycles. So that is the real estate. And uh, last but not least is the private credit. Um, the newest allocation, um, with that average age, is less than, less than two years. So uh, the board has established a 5% target to, to private credit. Um, basically, we'll, we'll target a similar uh, pacing as last year. Um, 215 million um, to private credit. I will say that we um, have tweaked the types of private credit funds we're going to focus on. So if you looked at the plan last year, we had uh, direct lending as 20 to 40 percent, and we've we've um, increased that target to 40 to 60 percent of, of the um, of the target, and that's a function of the um, the risk profile that we're looking for. As a fully funded plan, you can dial back the risk in, in the private credit program and, and still hit your uh, return target. So that's where we are with private credit uh, 215. So it, it, that'll look something like five commitments in the you know, $40 million range. Um, so that's the pacing. Um, see if there's any questions. Any questions? Any questions for Matt or Antonio? Um, and I'll actually go back, there's no question to go back to sharing and, and go through the public markets annual implementation plan. Um, and then once um, talked about that and Siegel Marco has talked, um, we'll, we can go back to the calendar and, and we'll, we'll uh, one more time kind of share the, the what, what folks are going to be voting on. So, um, and I invite, uh, Mike and Vanessa to, to, to talk especially about some of the um, rebalancing range um, issues that they're, they're seeing. Um, so this is our, our public market annual plan. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't say, I really thank the executive committee. We spent um, a good bit of time talking through um, each of these annual plans on um, Tuesday prior to this meeting. Um, so this is separated into three sections. The first is um, BRRRS independent major projects and searches. The first one on top here is the variable tax deferred annuity RFP. Um, this is something that is, has been kind of a long time cutting, coming. We've been working on this request for proposal for more than a year. Um, this is to explore options to, to bring the, the variable TDA investment platform and um, in, in, in custody in-house. Um, you know, our, currently this is managed through the teacher's retirement system, and we are looking to see if we, and it would be responsible for us to look to see if we can do um, you know, better on cost or investment options for our members. And so we have a particular bogey that we'd like to hit. If we do the exploration and find that we cannot save on cost for our members, then we'll remain with the TRS plan. But we thought it was prudent to, um, to, to deliver the RFP and 
SQL Marco has been a big help in developing, helping us develop questions for a potential um, investment manager platform and, and for custody. The second is global listed infrastructure search. Um, this is part of our um, coming out of the asset liability study that was completed in May and approved by the board in September. Um, we are, are trying to get to target um, in each of our asset classes, um, as Matt and we've talked about ad nauseum, as a plan that has, is, is now fully funded, we should, the most important thing is getting to target, we like the risk and return characteristics of the, of the target, asset, uh, target portfolio. Third is a private credit parking place review. So um, we started our private credit program in 2020. We're still a ways off from getting to target. We're about 1% invested out of a 5% target. So a lot of that money will be parked in the public markets. And so we want to review um, what are the most appropriate parking places for that, that capital until it is committed um, and then allocated. And um, whether or not, um, you know, looking at our, our current high yield managers and seeing um, how, what, how much we can allocate to them as, for, for that parking place. Um, we have four searches and um, it, that are still outstanding or will be getting shortly. Um, these are searches that were actually announced in 2020 um, and now rolled over into 2021. Um, I'll let uh, Siegel Marco talk about those in more detail in a second, but we will hope to have these searches, um, most of these searches, not all of them completed in the calendar year. Finally, we have some rebalancing ranges and benchmarking. There is one thing that is not on here that, um, that, that we'll, we'll put on here, but um, BAM is, is um, recommending that we increase ranges for certain managers, uh, Wellington Midcap, our State Street Top 200, uh, Global Equity, um, and um, reducing the range for our active managers. Um, one thing that, um, another thing we need to do is um, review the benchmark for, for fossil fuel divestment. Um, during the divestment process, we elected to maintain the benchmarks that we would compare our, our managers to. Um, that still may be the prudent thing, but we have to make sure that we're reviewing them on a regular basis. Um, and, and so I'd actually invite, I'd like to invite Siegel Marco to give their comments on the searches and, and kind of where we are there. And then for also their at least initial views on the rebalancing ranges um, that are pr were proposed by the Bureau of Asset Management. Sure. Um, I think, Vanessa, are you still on? Yep, I got it then. So yeah, let me run through the, the searches and I'll just try to give a 10,000 foot view. The the, um, you know, we, especially we've talked a lot as Tony just said about the Linstead infrastructure search, that's really a departure where we're going to handle that our own. We internally at Siegel Marco, we have our research folks already looking at, um, kind of what that broad list of names will look like. You know, we put together the RFP. Um, so we're, we're counting on that as kind of 1 of the major steps in 2022 for the, for the, uh, BRS system. Um. I skipped, as Antonio said, uh, on the variable tax deferred annuity. I just want to comment, as I did to the executive committee, that it's very comprehensive um, look at the platform for offering those participants an even better way to, I think, invest and to um, have kind of up to date technology for their um, custody and and. Uh, ability to have investment options in there. And it's really the governance and the fiduciary aspect and a little bit of um, protection because th those defined contribution kind of plans have really been getting scrutiny in the marketplace. So it's important initiative to, uh, like Antonio said, we have some hurdle rates, even if we don't make an explicit change, we'll get a lot of insight and, and the due diligence and the process is as, almost as important as the outcome. In terms of the searches, um, you, you know, some of these we've moved pretty far along the fixed income emerging manager of uh, manager fund of funds already identified a candidate there. Uh, uh, that will be bringing up in early 2022. We've already vetted that with BAM um, and through the Siegel Marco research. The in, the uh, international developed and the equity international X small cap are areas that we've talked about quite a bit. Um, we've identified some initial manager lists um, and worked with the uh, Bureau of Asset Management e Equity team to uh, start to get through the selection process. You know, that's a three step process where we, we do some initial uh, uh, screening. The cons consultants from all the systems submit their names. We see which ones are in common, and then we move to, to some short lists. Uh, for that, in terms of the fixed income um, government passive, we're doing that on two levels. We are looking at the allocation 
um, and what our appropriate overall fixed income structure is. And then in terms of the, the actual RFP, there's uh, the SSGA contracts, I guess, are up. We already have all the sleeves. It'll be a matter of looking at fees and structure within the treasury section. That is the treasury uh, and government holdings that we have. Remember, that's really what we use to adjust the overall duration. We want to stay near a market duration on our fixed income portfolio, and we use the respective short, intermediate, and long sections of the treasury market to help adjust that. And then we have, you know, BlackRock on the mortgage side and T. Rowe Price and Pew on the on the uh, corporate and, and uh, the corporate side. Uh, <clears throat> um, in terms of Antonio, should I cover the rebalancing range? We're we going to say more about that. Um, yeah, no, no. If you could uh, cover that, um, just because you know, in general, if I know, I think there was one issue we had with the the SSGA um, uh, top two hundred um, increase. Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, the the point is that it overall, as you know, we have a, a a large weighting and index, but we like to use our managers to be able to. Our active management is really to add a, 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 some incremental return on top of those index strategies. One one of the rebalancing had a an increase in the amount of uh, allocation to the SSGA top 200. That's the largest 200 stop stocks. So think Microsoft and Apple and the stocks that we've you know seen in the press for the past couple of years. That's a bit of a concern in a period where th those stocks have become remarkably overvalued and to a certain extent um, their weighting and the incredible size of those stocks with, I think Apple's about to hit what three trillion dollars in capitalization. Um, <clears throat> they're they're really distorting kind of our, our overview of being able to um, of being able to be cross uh, uh, weighted across the market capitalizations. And it also affect, would, would affect us for the rebalancing if we move money out of that and over into the small and mid cap space. So we're going to be taking a look, and that there were some of the ranges. We're going to be taking a closer look at those ranges that are in the the uh, uh, implementation plan for next year to be able to adapt for that. Thank you, Mike. And so um, when we get to to the public equity plan um, for the vote, we will ask for one one slight modification. And that we will say we, we would generally are, are fine approving that plan. The one modification that, that we would we would want is more of we would like to review to, to do further review of the rebalancing ranges. And we just want to make that clear that we're not saying no to those, but we would like to our consultants to have more time to review how that looks at uh, how how that looks in and and in if there are any modifications that are necessary or if we're fine with the current rebalancing ranges. But we're fine with the with the searches that they're that we're going through. Um, just, but we, we see the rebalancing ranges as, um, that are in the current plan as, uh, time for review rather than things that we're going to just approve today. So, um, you know, I think, and I don't know the best way to, to, to do that, but we'll, we'll, um, we'll have an, a, a kind of a, a, a note or an appendix, I think, um, to, uh, for, for that. All right. So Antonio, uh, you know, Antonio, Michael, and Matt went over a, a bunch of different things that we're going to be voting on tonight. So do you want to, do you want me to, do you want to review one at a time and we'll yeah. vote like that? Okay. Yeah. So could you give us a quick review on the equity, private equity annual implementation plan? Absolutely. So um, for the private equity implementation plan, we are asking that the board um, approve a target uh, approve a commitment of up to 300 uh, of, of 335 million dollars plus or minus 84 million um, for the private equity um, uh, implementation plan. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Antonio? All right. So we'll vote on this this item now. Uh, all in favor of calendar item 19, please indicate your approval. Uh, I aye. Aye. Isaac I. Any, Hi, Vanessa. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, the next item on the agenda is calendar item 20. Authorization to the control of the city of New York to proceed with the real estate annual implementation plan. May I have a motion to consider? Natalie? Motion. Does that Janiel? Uh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Um, Antonio, give us a brief review on this. Absolutely. This is a, um, this is voting to approve a target commitment 
um, for calendar year 2022 of $200 million, plus or minus $40 million, um, $80 million in core real estate, and $120 million in non-core real estate. Thank you, Antonio. Does anybody have any questions for him? Okay, we'll now vote. All in favor of calendar item number 20, please indicate your approval. Aye. 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 Isaac. Aye. Aye. Aye, Jacqueline. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is calendar item number 21, authorization to the control of the City of New York to proceed with the infrastructure annual implementation plan. May I have a motion to consider? Michael. Michael in a second. Janiel. Thank you, Janiel. Uh, Antonio. So, so this is a, approving a target commitment to infrastructure for calendar year 2022 of $175 million plus or minus 35 million. Thank you, Antonio. Any questions, sir? All right, we'll vote. Uh, all in favor of calendar item 21, please indicate your approval. Aye. Aye, Michael. Aye. Isaac. Aye. 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 Aye, Jacqueline. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is calendar item 22, authorization to the control of the City of New York to proceed with the Public Equity Annual Implementation Plan. May I have a motion to consider? Michael. Michael in a second. Janelle. Thank you, Janelle. Um, Antonio, this is, uh, this is the 1 where we'll have 1 modification. Um, this is to approve the searches for calendar year 2022 and for our consultant Siegel Marco advisors to review the, um, rebalancing range, uh, modifications pr uh, proposed by the Bureau of asset management. Okay. Thank you. Antonio, anybody have any questions? Okay, so now I have a question. Uh, is this going to just be a resolution on calendar item 22 or are we modifying it? Uh, Alex, no, so oh, we can. So I don't know if Alex is, is fine because the 1 thing that is interesting is that the, um, for this 1, we want to make sure that they're not proceeding. And so what we will do, and I don't know if, if Alex or Sharon can answer this. Um, can we provide, would it be better to, to, to modify this after the vote? Or would it be better to send a uh, kind of an attachment to this resolution um, on that item? Well, <clears throat> if the board wishes to modify the resolution, then the modification should be done before the vote, okay. or at least it should be clear exactly what it's going to be. Okay. Otherwise, you, you know, you need to know what you're voting for. Okay. Okay. So. How am I going to call for a vote on this if we're kind of changing it? I'd actually be fine with um, tabling for another month. This, this is not a um, item that is, these are public markets. We have time. Um, and so, um, you know, after having this discussion with Siegel Marco, given our uncomfortability with that, I, that one item, um, we can table it for, for an additional month. I agree. It'd be good to have the ranges, right? We could have the board approve the specific ranges we want. Okay. Uh, calling for a motion to table calendar item 22 till January of 2022. Michael. Michael in a second. Second. Natalie. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, all in favor of tabling calendar item 2022, uh, calendar item number 22 to January of 22. Aye. Aye. Isaac, aye. aye. Vanessa. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Yeah, motion carries to table calendar item 22. Next item on the agenda is calendar item 23, authorization to the control of the city of New York to proceed with the public fixed income annual implementation plan. May I have a motion to consider? Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. In a second. Michael, thank you, Michael Antonio. Can you tell us about this? Proceed with the searches that the, um. Uh, that were in the, um, comptroller's recommended, um, annual implementation plan. Okay, great. Any questions for Antonio? All right, 
uh, we'll now vote on calendar item number 23. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is calendar item 24, authorization to the control of the city of New York to proceed with the alternative credit annual implementation plan. May I have a motion to consider? Deb. Thank you, Deb, in a second. Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, Antonio, can you please tell us about this? Yes, this is, um... Uh, the board is approving a target commitment to private credit of 215 million dollars plus or minus 43 million and to proceed with any searches um, in our high yield portfolio for the year and we are comfortable with that recommendation okay thank you antonio any questions for him all right we'll now vote on this item all in favor of calendar item 24 please indicate your approval aye aye, aye michael aye. isaac Jacqueline. aye any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, the next uh, agenda items are investment related items that belong in executive session. May I have a motion to enter executive session? Vanessa. Move Michael. Michael and a second Vanessa. Uh, all in yes. favor of entering executive session, please indicate your approval. Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Motion carries. We're now in executive session. Can you please stop the recording? Report out the board's actions during executive session. During executive session, the board voted to approve calendar item 25, authorization of the controller to commit a portion of the private equity portfolio. Calendar item 26, authorization of the controller to commit a portion of the real assets portfolio. And calendar item 27, authorization of the controller to commit a portion of the private equity portfolio. Thank you, Alex. Next item on the agenda is calendar item 28, an amendment to the authority and procedure of the executive committee of the Board of Education Retirement System. And may I have a motion to consider? Michael. Thank you, Michael. In a second. Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, Antonio, can you please tell us about this? Yes, and I would also, if if, if necessary, would love to, the legal team to also comment on this as well as so they've done and work with the investment strategy team on this. Um, this is a um, recommendation. I think when we talked about the investment policy statement uh, recommendation in November, one of the things that we had not gotten feedback on was uh, changes to the authority of the executive committee when it comes to month to month investment making decisions. Um, as you all are aware, um, both from um, talking, but then also from a memo in the um, board packet, uh, when we when the board went back to in, in person meetings during the su this past summer, um, Burrs missed uh, did not did not get quorum through the summer and missed out on several closes for um, for investment funds that were top tier that we had invested with before. The net result of that being a close to three million dollar. Um, uh, essentially uh, increase in fees or uh, on a net present value basis, $2.1 million increase in fees that Burrs would not have otherwise paid um, if, if uh, we were able to vote to, to do those closes. Um, as a result, um, you know, we, we tried to contemplate what is the best way to balance the month to month investment decisions that need to be made um, on, a, on a really um, kind of constrained timescale with the larger um, responsibilities of the board of trustees when it comes to things like asset allocation, asset liability studies, portfolio construction. And so what we're asking for the, the board today is to balance those two items with um, by giving the executive committee additional authority for the time constrained and month to month investment decision making um, under a time under um, you know time limits and on dollar parameters. So the smaller dollar amount decisions would go to the executive committee with reports to the broader board and the larger um, asset allocation, large manager selections and portfolio construction decisions, hiring of the consultants would still remain with the board, the broader board of trustees. It will still be a re reviewed by the executive committee as it's been do done already. Um, those limits are thus on an annual basis, 
the executive committee would have the authority to approve new index fund managers, new active public market managers um, and programs up to $250 million. Um, that's in the public markets. In the private markets, up to $50 million. And then approve additional investments that were previously approved by the board. So if the board has already reviewed it, the executive committee could reauthorize. Importantly, the executive committee would be made up of the two elected employee members, the chancellor's representative, and two members of the panel of edu additional members from the panel of education policy. This would be an annual authorization with requirements for, to review on a quarterly basis. Um, and, and importantly, and no action from the executive committee cannot be taken without the majority vote of the board and at least one of the employee representatives, um, similar to how it does on the board of trustees. The board of trustees still would have the authorization to uh, approve all asset allocation, uh, portfolio construction, and manager selection above the authorized amount. So, for instance, in our active public markets, we have um, several managers that manage more than $250 million, managers like Bailey Gifford or Spruce Grove. In those cases, the, board of the, the recommendation would still go to the Board of Trustees for approval and would not come to the, the, um, uh, the Executive Committee if we're making a new recommendation. A reauthorization could still go to the Executive Committee. But we think this balances the time, the time constraints, particularly for pr private market funds, um, where, you know, it, it, from our perspective, uh, making sure that we were able to participate in first closes on a timely fashion um, and, and save our, our fund and our members money, um, and balancing that with the, the, the larger goal of having the full board review the really big investment items that really drive over a long period of time the fund's returns. Um, you all have the, the, the write-up, you have the, the, um, the, the new resolution. Um, I'd invite the, the um, legal team who, who worked and, and did a lot of editing um, and to, to comment if they see fit. Um, and happy to answer any questions on this because I do think it, it is the, the right way to balance the responsibilities um, given the, the, the time constraints for some of the private market fund closes in particular. Thanks, Antonio. I'd like to jump in with just a couple of words, and I'm not really going to to dive into the area of legal advice. If we're if that's necessary, we'll enter an attorney-client session. I just want to make a couple of comments. The first is I really want to thank the law department for all their support on this. They gave us a very detailed roadmap, which we worked with to get to this, and they continue to have conversations with us to refine it to something that is, um, you know, we think very solid. Um, secondly. Um, I'd just like to bring to the board's attention that this is a very conditional authorization. First of all, um, it can be modified by the board at any time. It can be rescinded by the board at any time. Finally, um, it does not extend beyond uh, December 31st, 2022 without the board affirmatively renewing it. Um, also, uh, I think that Antonio might have mentioned this in passing, but I want to emphasize it. There will be written quarterly reports to the board um, on all activities. Um, and of course, the board members uh, can also attend um, executive committee meetings whenever they wish, even though their presence won't count toward quorum and they won't have a vote. So I think for a number of reasons, there are, there are many safeguards that the board should continue c consider when uh, evaluating this. That, that's all I wanted to um, throw out there. Thank you. Are there any questions? No, I appreciate that, Alex, um, that additional sort of level of assurance. We'd spent a lot of time again in the executive committee discussing this for, for a number of months, and I really do endorse this. Yeah, it's Isaac. Same here, because it is conditional and because the employee trustees um, are in this. And so the board can turn over, but you don't just have an executive committee that's in name only and really has does not have a, um, a continuity or background in, in what's going on. But you would still have two of those members, but it would not be a majority. So I think that that's I think this is fair all the way around. Anybody else? Okay, we'll now vote on this item. All in favor of calendar item 28, please indicate your approval. 
Aye. Aye. Mike. Isaac, aye. aye. Vanessa. Jacqueline, aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is calendar item 29, an amendment to the investment policy statement of the Board of Education Retirement System. May I have a motion to consider? Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. And a second from Natalie. Um, Antonio, can you please tell us about this? Absolutely. Um, this is just to um, for the investment policy statement to reflect the um, the resolution that was just passed. Um, as with the resolution, the IPS um, makes this conditional um, and emphasizes that the uh, executive committee um, provides oversight and then on an annual basis and subject to reporting and review, um, the, the board of trustees may delegate the, those investment responsibilities. So it's emphasizing that, it's emphasizing what is statutorily re required um, for the to be contained in the report. Um, and so taking the work that um, Alex and, and, and Sharon in the law department did and putting it into the IPS. Thank you, Antonio. Uh, any questions for Antonio? All right, we'll now vote. Uh, all in favor of calendar item 29, please indicate your approval. Aye. 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 Isaac, aye. Vanessa. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. The final item on the agenda is noting receipt of the actuarial, actuarial section of the BRRRS fiscal year 2021 annual comprehensive financial report. May I have a motion to discuss? Eric. Thank you, Eric. And a second. Janelle. Thank you, Janelle. Uh, Mike, can you please tell us about this? Sure, I'd be glad to. So uh, that is the actuarial section, as you said, of the um, actual of the uh, CAFR, uh, the ACFR. Actually, it used to be called the CAFR. Now it's called the uh, ACFR. Uh, it contains a lot of the information about MERS for the fiscal year. It contains information regarding the liabilities of the plan, some of the assets of the plan. Some of the uh, members' uh, statistics, such as number of members, uh, pensioners, et cetera. Um, and that will go along with other sections that BRRRS is preparing. That will also contain uh, information about the investments in the plan and some of the financial information and, and other information about the plan. Um, it goes out each year and it's generally um, sent out at the end of the calendar year. Any specific questions, let me know, and I'll be glad to uh, glad to help you out. Does anybody have any questions? All right, thank you, Mike. You're welcome. That concludes the agenda for this meeting. Uh, the next meeting of the Board of Education Retirement System Board of Trustees is scheduled for Thursday, January 27th. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for their service. For those who will be at the next meeting, I'll see you then. But for those who won't be uh, from me, I appreciate your service uh, over the course of uh, my time doing this. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion, Michael. Thank you, Michael. And a second. Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, all those in favor of adjourning the meeting, please indicate your approval. Aye. 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 Vanessa. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Stay safe. Thank you. Happy holidays. 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 Best wishes for the new year. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Take care, everybody.